In this video, we're going to see a little theorem in linear algebra that is going to have enormous power in applying in the real world. And that's going to be the orthogonal decomposition theorem. So the first idea I want to introduce on the way to this big theorem is the idea of the orthogonal complement of a particular set. So the definition of an orthogonal complement is this. Suppose you have some subspace, a subspace W. Then what we're trying to visualize is all of the vectors that are orthogonal to that particular subspace. So for example, if uh, my subspace is a plane here, then the orthogonal complement is going to be all of the vectors which are going to be perpendicular or orthogonal to that plane. And then we can write it formally in this way as it is the set of all vectors where orthogonality we saw was related to taking a dot product and setting it equal to zero. So it's a set of all vectors where the dot product with anything in the subspace is going to be equal to zero. Now, one of the things that's really nice is, suppose that you have an orthogonal basis for your subspace W. It turns out that when you have this, you don't need to define the orthogonal complement to be the, the dot product with every single vector in W, because that would take a really long time to check. It only is required that you need to check that it is orthogonal to all of these orthogonal basis vectors. So, so let's suppose that condition instead, namely that our vector x is orthogonal to all of the orthogonal basis vectors. And here, I've written the orthogonality condition as a dot product, where it's equal to zero. So I'm going to claim that this is sufficient. And to do this, let's just choose a, a generic vector y. So let's just take a vector y, and I'm going to say that it's in w. But because I have an orthogonal basis, what this means is that this vector y can be written as a1 u1 plus all the way down to a n u n. And then if I'm going to apply my property that x dotted with any of these particular vectors is going to be zero, where the vectors are in my orthogonal basis, what that's going to tell me is that if I compute this x dot y, well, the a1 comes out the front. We know dot product distributes, so it's going to be x dot u1 and then we're going to go all the way along to the a n, and then we're going to take the x n, oh, excuse me, just the vector x here, dotted with the u n. And then because our assumption here is that all of these are zero, all of these terms are going to be zero, and the dot product is going to be zero as well. In other words, the set of vectors x that satisfy this weaker condition, that they're only going to be orthogonal to the basis vectors, turn out to be orthogonal to everything and therefore are inside of w perp. And then, because the uis are all just a special case of a gene generic vector in w, the containment works the other way around. In other words, we've shown that the condition of being in w perp is equivalent to the condition of saying that the vector x is going to be orthogonal to all of the basis vectors only. Now let's turn to our larger goal, the orthogonal decomposition now that we have this nice understanding of the idea of the orthogonal complement. 